Hello everyone, I'm Ashwarya, a rehabilitation counselor from LV Prasad Eye Institute, India. I'm also a 3D blind artist and this is my presentation on creating 3D tactile paintings. These paintings are not only experienced and touched by persons with vision impairment, but one can also do it themselves. So to begin with, I would like to play a video uh, in which I talk about how I got into uh, creating 3D tactile painting. I'm a late blind, as you may be aware, and um, this was in 2018 that I started creating this 3D tactile paintings. And uh, I also, in this video, I also share about the supplies required to create one. Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to share about the first tactile painting I did and the raw materials required to create one. To give you all a background, I was a late blind and I was into pencil sketching when I had my eyesight. I used to enjoy it, but after my blindness, I never thought I would be able to get back to artwork. But in 2018, I had been to a painting gallery wherein I uh, experienced, uh, not really experienced, those two-dimensional paintings. And uh, that's when I thought of creating tactile paintings that persons with vision loss like me could enjoy it and also do it themselves. The first tactile painting I did is called Happy Blossoms. It's a painting of uh, four big yellow flowers on a blue background. So the, when the idea of this painting came to my mind, I was thinking of uh, what material I can use to make it three dimensional. So I'm going to share about how I created this painting now. First, I took a canvas and painted it blue. Uh, of course, I took the help of the people around me uh, for their feedback to see if I have painted the canvas without leaving any gaps in between. Second, I took a, a smaller size a cellophane tape or a transparent tape and put it flat on the canvas um, so that you know there's a rounded hole on the canvas in between the roll of the tape. I then applied white glue in between that gap and I put golden beads on it, pressed them properly, sort of that they are settled well, and then I removed the cello tape. Uh, I created four circles like this on the canvas, uh, giving uh, you know a bit of space between each other. Then I took some dry leaves from the garden, painted them yellow, and I glued them around these four beaded circles on the canvas so that's how i created my first tactile painting now let's look at the basic uh, raw material that we require to make a tactile painting to start with acrylic paints go for the student purpose ones as we are just learning second canvas um, you can start off with a, a smaller size ones and maybe once you're confident about you know painting then you can go for the bigger size ones. Brushes. So get brushes of different sizes both square and round ones. A palette or a disposable plate for colors. White glue and super glue garbage bag, cello tape or transparent tape and a masking tape. I use them for masking. As I'm still exploring it, I may just be using the masking tape once I figure out a feasible method to paint. Aluminum foil. This is the most important material in your tactile painting because you create the 3D objects using the aluminum foil. Next is blank papers you will be using it to glue on the 3d aluminium objects and then paint over them later last are a hand cloth and a cup of water so these are the things required to create tactile paintings 
I hope the next time you will be ready with them so that we can start painting. So good luck. We'll see you all next time. Bye. So I started my journey in 2018 and so far I've created uh, 17 different uh, tactile uh, paintings and the experience creating them has been amazing and the best part is I was able to learn from my mistakes and uh, the experience obviously you know teaches one um, of various other things like example um, uh, there were paintings uh, that were simple in the beginning but later on as I progressed um, I started using different material and different kind of uh, patterns so now uh, going ahead uh, let me share with you about how to create these 3d uh, tactile paintings so first of all um, I remember when I started off uh, thinking of how to create it the first thought that came to my mind is I have an advantage is an advantage of uh, seeing colors before if somebody told me red or yellow I would know how they look but I was thinking how would somebody who's not seeing colors at all how do they comprehend it and how would they know that the different elements in nature are of that particular color and that's when I created this color reference sheet so in this sheet uh, what I did was I listed out uh, the colors of different element elements in nature um, like example the sunrise and sunset is reddish orange or pinkish orange uh, clear sky is blue monsoon sky is gray snow is white so somebody with you know who has not seen colors when they have if they have a concept oh i want to paint a sky today so they will know uh, a, a clear sky they would know looking at it that the clear the color of the clear sky is blue so likewise there are many other colors that i've written in in that and even Till date I keep updating this color reference sheet um, so that uh, you know there are more uh, things added to it and one will be able to you know whenever they see it they may find it useful moving on uh, the next one is sorting colors earlier when I started painting I had a, a problem with uh, identifying colors so I used to take up with the help of the sighted people around me to identify colors but it kind of became tedious because after a while um, you wouldn't know uh, I mean you may not have sighted help around so that is the reason why I wanted to sort out my colors in a way that I'm able to pick up the you know color that I want myself without anyone's help so what I did was I used three different methods one the main one is the tactile cues so I've made uh, shapes of different uh, uh, you know tactile things and I have glued them to the package and in this package I put colors of you know the same colors like all the red ones in one pack and yellow ones in the and in the other package and um, what I've done is I've glued this uh, tactile cues to it so example if I had to touch a tactile cue that's shaped like an apple I know that's red color likewise if it's shaped like a chocolate bar that's dark brown and uh, coffee cup for light brown and similar things so and the next thing is also the qr labels i mean we you know assistive technology is advancing so much that Q these qr labels are glued to the paints and as soon as somebody scans it uh, they're able to understand and know what color is it and especially if they if the qr labels if you can record uh, over this uh, qr labels you can actually say this red uh, you know i use it for uh, cherries or roses uh, you can be specific about what uh, kind of red it is and not only that there are many uh, volunteer assistance apps like you know there is an app called be my eyes so what I usually do is I call them up if I'm not sure of what particular shade is that and recently I had uh, I needed help with identifying two shades of red and which shade would uh, go for the painting that I was doing so I, I really had a great help from a volunteer who actually understood what I want and uh, walked me through the whole thing. So this way I'm able to sort out colors.
and moving ahead uh, the painting techniques um, so I've used different painting techniques I mean I don't just use brushes but of course brushes I use it for painting the main canvas but when it comes to the other 3d art I make use of different things for example if I want to uh, paint uh, trees or stems then I use a steel scrubber if I want to paint cloud then I use a sponge and uh, likewise if I want to give nice effects to raw and stones or if I want to paint the corals then I use toothbrush and uh, mostly for the 3d art in my paint I use my fingers because I know where I'm touching and if I'm able if I'm able to cover all uh, you know all of it without leaving any gaps so these are some of the uh, paintings uh, techniques that I use and going ahead uh, the next one is painting the background so background uh, usually my background you know it could be it uh, you know it's directly painted on the canvas and it usually has two backgrounds or uh, you know three backgrounds so if the background is just one color it is easy to paint you just paint it and you know usually what I do is I put two coats so that in case if I leave any gap in the first coat uh, it is covered in the uh, second coat but example if there are two uh, backgrounds like let's say there's a sky and there's a grass so i may you know i mean i may not be sure if the colors could get mixed uh, so that is the reason why i started using masking tapes earlier uh, in my video you must have heard like i used uh, garbage bags so i've stopped using garbage bags now but i use only masking tapes to cover one area like example if i want to paint the sky and the grass i cover the grass area and then i paint the sky blue and once the sky area and, and i do double coat and once the sky area is dry i put the masking tape on the sky area and then i paint the grass area with green so that way the colors don't get mixed up and i get the background i want and in my earlier paintings my background is usually plain i've not used any textures but in the later paintings you know the latest ones i've used different textures like for carpet i've used foam paper for snow I've used salt and um, uh, then for beach I've used sand so that even in the background people are able to differentiate between uh, you know two different backgrounds and creating the 3d art so I uh, what I use is uh, you know I use aluminum foil for the 3d art I shape it into whatever shape I want it to be I give it volume I give it width and um, the reason I use aluminum foil is it is um, you can reshape it like unlike clay once you shape clay it is difficult to reshape it because after a while it gets hard and also uh, you know clay becomes heavy to be glued onto the canvas whereas aluminum foil is very light and um, uh, you can it, it works similar to clay so I use aluminum uh, clay to make different shapes so in this uh, the painting that is you know in the making has a uh, making uh, the fork uh, the donut the plate and also a big giant ladybug and I made it out of aluminum foil and uh, in the beginning I, I I mean it's it is kind of tricky to figure it out but once you know what shape you want and uh, the best part of it, aluminum foil even if you go wrong with proportions you can actually reshape it again and after um, uh, doing the 3d art the next thing is layering this aluminum foil with paper many ask me why don't you directly uh, coat the aluminum foil with the with color i realized when i did that what used to happen is the shine of the aluminum foil is seen through the color so that is the reason why i layer it with paper so when i'm gluing it i use a bit of uh, white adhesive and also a bit i dab a bit of water because that's when it actually it's able to catch the exact shape of the aluminum um, artwork and uh, in this one i have colored the uh, i've layered the donut uh, the ladybug and the plate and uh, whereas the fork i've kept it i left it like that because i wanted a steel effect uh, to the fork and going ahead next is 
coloring this uh, uh, 3D art. So what here as well, I use masking tape. Um, like the plate is, uh, you know, just a plain color. So I haven't used masking tape there. But when it comes to the ladybug, the the legs and the head of the ladybug is black in color, but the body is red in color. So what I've done is I've first uh, colored the black, and I've uh, you know covered it with masking tape and then I applied red color so that the colors don't get uh, mixed up and this is how I color my 3d art and of course it takes time when you're coloring it but um, it's fun coloring it actually because um, you can you know feel the edges and you can uh, also the, you know, I do double coat uh, just to make sure that you know there are no gaps left I also I do use brushes also to color color it but I'm comfortable with my fingers and the, la the last stage of uh, creating the 3D tactile painting is gluing um, the the 3D art uh, to the main canvas. So uh, I either use a white adhesive or super glue. So white adhesive is for you know something that's not too heavy or you know may not fall off. That usually has a flat uh, background. Uh, but uh, the super glue is uh, for ones you know that are delicate like example in my one of my latest paintings uh, the Harry Potter one I have a painting of uh, a Harry uh, taking a Hedwig's cage on his trolley towards the Hogwarts Express so the cage uh, was made of wire and I couldn't use uh, white adhesive for that so that is the reason why I had used super glue to glue it to the uh, trolley or on top of the trolley so we should uh, be able to you know uh, think to ourselves like what I mean whether white adhesive is enough or whether we should go ahead and use uh, super glue and uh, this is the uh, final picture of uh, the painting and I've named it just a bite and uh, for those of you who have vision impairment I will explain the painting to you it's a 12 into 12 inch uh, canvas and it is painted uh, olive green color and on top of it there's a plate a white color round plate uh, which is occupying most of the canvas um, except towards the diagonal sides and um, in on on the plate uh, towards the top uh, right uh, on the two o'clock position there's a donut a brown color donut with some decorations on it and next to that there's a steel fork and just opposite to the donut at the seven or eight o'clock position there's a ladybug a big giant red and black color ladybug that's crawling towards the donut so when one looks at it it looks like um, the ladybug is quite hungry and it is you know about to eat the donut and that's the reason why i named it just a bite and uh, uh, moving ahead, I would like to share some pictures of the workshop that I have done um, at my workplace in 2019 and there were 16 artists uh, with vision impairment uh, in this workshop and um, whatever I have uh, explained to you right now, I had uh, done the same with them and the advantage was I was able to show them um, each stage of creating uh, these tactile paintings for them to understand in a better way and uh, they were able to, you know, learn it well and uh, with the help of the volunteers uh, beside them they were able to create their own 3d tactile paintings and the amazing part was um, three of these 16 artists haven't seen colors at all and they were able to do the painting so that was um, quite uh, touching for me because um, I remember one of them had come to me and said hey you know what I've never seen colors I've you know I didn't even know what paint what a painting is and today I'm able to paint and you know use colors so mm, I'm, I'm very happy so I was very touched with his response and uh, moving on uh, there are pictures of the exhibition that was held after the workshop and um, the best part of, of this exhibition was both uh, people with uh, you know who have a sight who had have sight and you know as well as visually impaired had come down uh, to see the experience the paintings and they were able to enjoy it under one roof and um, 
uh, and the best part was, you know, many visually impaired when they, as soon as they touched the painting, they were like, hey, this is a dog or this is a well, you know, um, they, I mean, they didn't need any external uh, description, but, you know, as soon as they touched it, they were able to understand what the painting was. And um, I would now like to share some of uh, the paintings that I have done. And right now there's this painting called uh, the, uh, A Tranquil Moment. Uh, so this is a painting of a man and a dog standing on a, a grass, uh, you know, and overlooking a lake. And far beyond the lake is the sunrise uh, sky. And towards the left, there's an autumn uh, a tree, um, you know, and it is an autumn season because the leaves are red and uh, yeah, red and orange. And in this painting, what I've done is for the tree, I've used tissue paper mache. And uh, for the uh, leaves, I've used aluminum foil. The man and the dog, again, are made of aluminum foil foil the sky and the water you know they the lake they are of course plain uh, canvas and uh, the grass that are standing on is made of uh, foam paper uh, going ahead uh, there's this uh, uh, painting of calm serenity um, it is um, it, it, it's a it's a painting of snow-capped mountains on you know on an island and um, around which um, yeah, you know there are uh, small houses and this is in center of a water body and towards the right side there's a cliff and on top of the cliff there are two huge pine trees and in this painting for the snow I've used uh, of course I painted it white I'm, and for you know for people to feel that it's snow I've used salt and it did uh, you know I didn't realize you know salt does take time to dry uh, so once as soon as I glued the snow it took like three to four days to dry so I had to keep it you know without touching it for you know further modification um, then the next painting is a painting of an Indian tribal woman and this painting I've named it as aghast because she looks shocked in this painting and the reason I did this painting is um, as, a, as somebody who's to do sketch uh, sketching I loved doing you know portrait faces of people and, um, and I, I was not sure if I'll be able to do the same when it came to 3d tactile painting and then i took it up as a challenge and i was able to create this painting of a woman um, who's in a, a traditional indian wear and leaning towards a wooden pillar uh, then moving on the next painting is of uh, cinderella and uh, the reason i did this painting is because um, i was thinking how you know as we as a young you know when we were young you know when we were kids um, i remember that i used to take the fairy tale books and just have a look at it because the pictures over there would be so beautiful so i thought you know how will a child who is who is born blind will be able to experience the same thing and that's when I thought of creating this painting um, of a Cinderella descending the stairs so the I you know whenever I had children touch this painting they um, they they were so excited because they were able to touch the shoes that's left behind her jewelry gloves earrings hairstyle and her uh, you know beautiful uh, gown uh, so I really enjoy whenever I see kids touch this painting because um, the excitement is, in, you know, at another level. And uh, going ahead, uh, this is a painting of uh, the Whomping Willow from the Harry Potter movies. And um, the Whomping Willow is standing towards the left ominously. And... Uh, I really enjoyed doing this painting because it was, uh, you know, I yeah, I mean, I felt I was experimenting with it. So there's Harry Potter on the broom towards the right side in the sky. And uh, not sure if it's visible in this painting, but there is a serious black in the form of the dog um, getting into the tree hole. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, I again, you know, when I was when I thought of this painting, I was like, you know, I've seen the movie, but what 
about those you know who've read the books and who have not seen it or who not watch movies how will they understand and that's when i thought you know let me do this painting and the last one i have here is uh, a painting uh, called the living room it is a painting um, a vertical painting and uh, it is a painting of a living room so there's carpet and the wall for the background so the carpet i've used foam paper the wall is just the plain um, green color on the canvas and towards the right side there's the floor lamp and just be beside the floor lamp there's a puppy sleeping in a basket the basket has inundations and um, then uh, towards the left side there's a cupboard that can be opened and in the cupboard there are four books one of the books the smaller one towards the right side can be flipped open and on top of the cupboard there's a photo frame wine bottle glasses and a fancy candle stand and just over uh, top of uh, this cupboard on the wall there's a grandfather clock uh, with the minutes seconds and the hours and and also the pendulum and one can when they when one touches it they can actually feel um, the time on the clock so the I mean there was no um, message behind this painting but I just wanted you know someone to have a rich tactual experience when they touch this painting so uh, the paintings that I've lately started doing you know they have advanced compared to what I did earlier because the earlier ones were simple and I was just since I was just experimenting and I was not sure and I was also learning from my mistakes uh, so now I'm able to uh, you know uh, create uh, more textures and uh, the designs are different and I'm able to do different painting patterns like I'm also able to do uh, the dry brush technique that you know many sighted people use so these are the things that I'm you know able to do despite my vision impairment and I think uh, once you have your eyes set on something nothing can stop you from it and uh, on that note I would say that art is an experience and disability once disability cannot uh, keep uh, one away from it and uh, this is what has happened to me and I've experienced art and I would like to share this with many people with vision impairment and I hope to see that uh, inclusion is given importance um, in painting galleries and exhibitions so that people with vision impairment are able to equally enjoy this form of artwork thank you for giving me this opportunity